Welcome back to another week of instigating with Clarky and Drury brought to you by Larry Hudson's Chevrolet Buick GMC here in Listowel, and of course our friends at the Listowel Squash Courts. I'm back. I'm back. back. I Clarky, I do you think I've got a little bit of a tan? Like what do you think? I don't know. I'm yeah, back yeah, Dominican. yeah, your nose is a little red. Oh, a little, yeah, little burnt dude, nose. I, I got pretty sun kissed poolside in the Dominican. Good. The the Good. foam party really did oh. me in. I got cooked that day. Uh, we are nice. very pleased to be yeah. joined by our great friend, pro golfer and golf instructor at the Ian Doig Golf Academy. Our buddy Ian Doig. Doigie, how are you? You're down south of the border as well. I am. I am good to be here as always, guys. And uh, yeah, you're you're catching me on my drive down to. Uh, Eventually Florida, but uh, we're going to spend a few days in Pinehurst, North Carolina, play a bit of golf and visit with some friends while we're here. Nice. Now I there's a famous that. course there, Pinehurst. What is it? Number two? Is that you're not playing that, though? I'm not playing Pinehurst. Number okay. two. I have a very, very good friend of mine by the name of Pat McGowan, who was rookie of the year on the PGA Tour in 1978. We've been friends for 40 years and he and his family own. Mid Pines, Pine Needles, and Southern Pines golf courses here in Piner. So uh, tomorrow wow. morning we're playing Mid Mid Pines, which is a great Donald Ross golf course, just been redone. And then we're uh, on Saturday we're playing Pine Needles, and Pine Needles has hosted three U.S. Women's Opens. It's absolutely spectacular, in my opinion. I actually like it more than number two. There we go. Wow, nice. There you Sounds are. fun. And are you going wow. down to Florida? to um, participate in any qualif qualifiers or anything or are you just going to have some fun? Yeah. just going to i'm going to train and practice uh yeah. because when i do come home i have a couple qualifiers that i am going to play in in early may uh but this month is more about uh with all the health stuff that we went through it's been over a year since i've had a trip mm -hmm. which is very unusual for me and and i haven't been down south since in a year so uh we're gonna we're gonna lay by the pool go to the beach hang out have some uh, cocktails and uh, I'll, you know, I'll practice a little bit and play a little bit, but we're, this is more about a vacation for uh, Chuggy and I. Nice. Well, very good. We had the pleasure. My girlfriend Sue and I had to spend the weekend with Ian and Chuggy at Sue's house. And it was a great catching up again. And uh, you look good. I mean, never know all the wires and everything in your chest, but uh, you're looking good. Yeah. You know what? And I'm getting there. I'm feeling better all the time and starting to get some energy back. Uh, working out again and uh, a few weeks ago they gave me the full-on go swing as hard as you want so i've been working on my speed and uh, i got my driver club head speed back up around 102 103 so i'm getting there so pretty pleased sounds, sounds good yeah, about, about, yeah about 30 miles per hour quicker than clark he can bring the club probably head down. that's probably great. <laughs> well, i'm not gonna dispute that yeah, yeah. doigie i'm excited that you're on man because we're as we record this on Thursday, March 30th, by the way, which is uh, Major League Baseball opening day, currently sitting here watching the Blue Jays in St. Louis. We're a week and just shy of a half away from the one and only the Masters, the pursuit of the green jacket. It's going to be incredible before we get to that, though. And of course, we're going to make some picks. We got to make picks because you're Absolutely. on the show. We got to have some picks with Doigie. Yeah. Valero Texas Open going on this week, though, and there's a spot open. Somebody is going to get themselves a spot in the vaunted tournament, of course, at Augusta. Who do you like? I mean, who maybe has a good chance at the Valero Texas? We know Corey Connors is going down there again, a past champion, but he's already in. Who do you like for the Valero Texas? Because it's an underrated tournament. Yeah, it is. So I think there's going to be a sleeper come out of the pack. Um, I'll be very honest. I haven't looked at the leaderboard for today, really. Um, my sentimental guy that I'd like to see do something would be, uh, you know, a Mackenzie Hughes or some. Or no, Mackenzie might already be in, isn't he? Yeah. So uh, any any of the Canadians that aren't in, obviously. And uh, I I have a kid on one of my teams in my the pools that I get in by the name of Eckroad. And I think he started out okay today. He played well last week. And I'd like to see him kind of pull something out of the hat and get it done. So that would be kind of fun. He's a rookie. He's just getting started. So who knows? 
as I as I look at it right now, again, recording this on the Thursday, so opening day, tied at the top of the leaderboard, Mr. Kucher and Harrington, the Irish golfer, both four under on the day. Garrick Hago had a good day. Nick Taylor right there at three under. So he's tied for second. That's uh hey, you know, we got some Canadian I, content in there, Doigie. We do, but I got a pull for Patty. I mean, come on. Yeah, he's how old is he now? Me, right? He's 52. Wow. Yes, he is. That's what he's listed here. And Ryan, yeah. I told uh, I told uh, Doggy on the weekend that I've gone back to my uh, roots in golf when I used to use an orange golf ball. I now love the red golf ball. And I okay. used it in the uh, down in Dominican when I went. And I could see it so much better. So why not use it, right? Doggy just shook his head. Like, what are you doing? What's the matter? I mean, why? Like, come on. What's the matter with it? Well, you know what? I get it. If you can see it better, go for it and everything else. But I'm such a traditionalist. I know you I are. Mean, let's put white golf balls in play, guys. I mean, come on. Really? A red golf <laughs> I guess, ball? Next thing, I guess next if I thing, put it know, in play all the time, it wouldn't matter. Dot. Yeah. We'd be, we'd be playing polka dot golf balls. There, but is, you know there what? is polka dot. If somebody comes to me, a, a manufacturer comes to me or Titleist comes to me, exactly. you know, that's what gives me my golf balls and says, Doiggy, we want you to pay, play a black golf ball, but you're going to shoot 66 every time you play. It's yep. going in the lineup pretty quickly. That's right. So, there you go. Yeah. Yep. So if I it helps it, your I game, Clarky, that's go right. Ahead. Yeah. Right. Play, right? play your Rudolph the red nosed reindeer golf ball. And I yep. mean, best of oh, luck yeah, to man. you. Maybe you get an early oh, Christmas gift. A little exactly. hole in one with that on a par three. Good for yes. you. Yes, exactly. Let's, Let's talk about I, the I masters. Don't, I don't, I, Okay, yes. hold on. I don't know if I'm allowed to do this or not, but uh, we were just joined in the vehicle here by Chuggy. my wife, Chuggy. So I'm going to let her say hi. So. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, Chuggy. <laughs> Hello. Does she want to get in our waves. pool? Does she want to get in our pool or is she not prepared? You want to be in the draft? No, she doesn't want to be no, in the draft. No, okay, no problem. She, she, she's been a great navigator today all the way down here, but I actually let her drive for a little while and I took a bit of a nap. And, uh, nice. And did a bit of research into who's playing in the Masters, so just to okay. be prepared for my picks. So awesome, yeah. how, how many? How many are we going to pick? I don't know. Let's just do three each. What do you four. say? Let's uh, four. You want to do a healthy four, four. pack? Four. Yeah. Okay, four. four. I think four. four. I'll give you yeah. a healthy four. And pack. Ian, I'm, I'm fine already, with that. I don't know if you heard the last show. We're not doing this money board stuff. It's only scores. <laughs> Yeah, we're okay. doing it's just scores. scores. <laughs> it's just scores. No money board. It's scores. Okay. You add yeah. up the four scores of your four players. Now, here's the deal, though. Yeah. You got to be careful because it's almost <laughs> better to not make the cut if a guy's going to be like 20 over. But that's the that's the breaks, right? So, well, whatever. but if you hold on, if you're going by scores, if you have a guy that misses the cut, you're out. Your team's out. You're not out if you miss the cut. Well, you have to be. Why? Well, be because you don't have a full team. This is a good right? discussion. So, so well, say, but say then all, say all four of my guys make the cut and two of yours miss the cut, you're gonna have a lower total than me. Well, I not mean necessarily because you're gonna count the score. Yes, gonna we're gonna count. Your... We're gonna count all the. But they, the won't, last but they won't. But they won't. But they won't have a score for Saturday or Sunday, and I will. Correct. Correct. And it might so be your guys tough, better play well down. on Saturday or Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fine. How do you get you know around what? that? We're not doing money board. We're not going there. You know, we do you know money. Why? No, we're, we're not. Leading, it's we're not. Everything we do is always by money. No, no. When you go look at the PGA tour, what do you look at? The money list. When you go to the champions, Doesn't tour, matter. what do you look at? No, the money we're not list. doing it. We're not doing well, it. Well, I want to If you pick the winner, you're going to win for sure. And that's not the way it should work. Here's why this is a non-issue though, guys. Here's why this is a non-issue because we're such golf experts that we're all going to pick four guys that are there on Sunday anyway. Well, we should for sure. And here's the other thing. Okay. We're going to pick four guys. Let's say at least three have to make the cut. Okay. Sure. Three Fine. have okay. to make the cut. So you pick four and the top three players on your team. Those are the scores sure. that count. I'm okay. fine by that. We can do that. You get to throw that. one guy out. You get okay. to throw one guy out. Okay, Fine. done. Love it. Okay. Right. And, and I'm the you... guest, so I get to pick first. Are we going to get right into it? Do we want to discuss things as we go? or Well, sh we... should we do the picks or should we maybe analyze the tournament That's a little what bit? I'm saying. There's plenty of story. Okay. Doggy doesn't right. like maybe, doing right. that because he's going to give up secrets. So why don't we do the picks first? No, no, no. There's no. Yeah, there's I don't no want to give up my secrets. See? Oh, there's all kinds and, of secrets. Yeah, there's and all also, kinds. Well, also, let's do the draft first. 
three. Okay, okay, fine. Okay. We, so we why don't do we run through? We'll, first. We'll, we'll, no, we'll we'll each pick one, and then we'll discuss a little bit, and then okay. we'll pick. Well, the we next just one discuss, and discuss as we go. I don't hate right. that. Okay. I don't hate that. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. so, okay. so uh, you're I'm the guest, so I get the number one. I'm going to go way out in a limb. I have a hunch for number a one. I'm hunch on this for my number one pick. Uh, this is a hunch that I'm going with. He's been playing pretty well lately. He's driving it well. He's putting well. I think his frame of mind is in the right place. And the last thing he wants to do is have a live player win the Masters. Mm -hmm. So I'm going with Rory McIlroy. Rory. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, you, it's not really going out on a limb, I don't think. No, but... it's not. Oh, I thought it was. Well, I don't, <laughs> don't think so. <laughs> Rory. You don't have to go out on a limb. How can you go out on a limb I... and pick Rory? Whatever. I, I want to say that because because I lost the last pick off between you and I, Clarky, yeah. I'm going to just go ahead and take the second pick, if if you don't mind. Go ahead. Whatever. Okay? Yeah. And, and we won't do a snake here because there's only three of us. We'll just go down to you, right back to Doigie and down. Okay? Is that... We're doing a snake. Okay, fine. No, if you want to do yeah, yeah, do and snake. I had a discussion we'll about snake. this afternoon. All we'll right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we'll well, the then I'm not. I'm not going to waste any time. He said a bit of a shaky start, but mm -hmm. I believe in the big moments. He will eventually show up for me, and I will be taking my guy, Colin Morikawa. I knew it. How, how come I knew that was coming out? I know. He picked well, him first last time, too, and he didn't win, so whatever. <laughs> he fell apart on Sunday. He really, really did. Okay, Clarky? I'm really excited about this. I get two picks in a row, and you the do. hottest golfer in the world. Is available. Congrats. So I'm picking Scotty Scheffler with my first pick. Okay. That's a good pick. Okay. Defending champion, Thank though, you. a lot of pressure. Has to host yep. the dinner this week. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. there's a lot going yeah. on. Yeah, he gets for him to pick the week. menu, no, right? The... You pick you pick yep. the menu. Yep. And yeah. He's you have doing a... sliders. Oh, he's doing sliders. He's doing, he's doing sliders and uh uh pretty simple actually. Pretty simple menu. I was quite surprised. Some of them get very elaborate. You know, I, I think fall the one year had haggis, um, yeah, yeah. you know, and I don't think too many of the guys were too keen on that. <laughs> the thing about it is the dinner that you always have the opportunity to just order off the menu as well, off mm. the Augusta menu. So if you don't like what they're, what they're serving up, you just order off the menu. So, okay. Very oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Number two, I'm thrilled. I, I'm going to get like John Rom number two. Yeah. Like, wow. Another great pick. Like, yeah. boy. There you are. We're third and fourth well, pick to get those two guys. Yeah. I'm absolutely yeah. thrilled. Yeah. All right, Rory, runners. you're next. I, I'm not even going to hesitate. I love the way this guy's playing golf right now. He's always involved, and I think that his game really suits it's Augusta. The same guy I think. Here we go. I, I love – no, I might shock you. I love Max Homa. Oh, okay. You did shock uh, me there. Pick. Max that's, Homa. That's a good pick. That's a good I, pick. I like, I like Max a lot. And yeah, I will be yeah. taking him with my second pick. Okay. Ian, two to you. All right. Two to me. So this one might surprise you a little bit. Um, but he's been playing very well of late. As a matter of fact, last week he played extremely well. I'm going to go with Cameron Young. Mm. He's, man, he's playing just as well as anybody, man. His wedge yeah. play is ridiculous, Doigie. Like he and he's a great, great putter, wedge. and I think, he's, I think he's due to win, right? And not too many times is, do they make their first win a major, mm -hmm. but this might, be, this might be the time. He's playing that well. He drives it long. He wedges it good. He putts good. You know what? And and he's he's peaking. He's he's really coming into form. So that I'm going to go okay. with Cam. Cam Young, that number pick. two. Your number three pick. My number three pick. Um, you know what? Maybe a little off the board, but uh, he's played well here in the past, and uh, he just seems to rise to the occasion. And I'm going to go with Hideki Matsuyama. Oh God, that's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. I like Hideki yeah. a lot. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So you got Rory, Cam Young, and Matsuyama. And Ryan's up. Marikawa and Homa so far. Yes. And I I'm going to take another H name, a guy who <laughs> is also continuing to play very, very well. And I think this guy is due for a win himself. He's always in the mix. And the biggest thing that I like about this guy is Sunday this year is his strongest day. 
I love Tyrrell Hatton. Mm. That, that would surprise yeah, yeah that that's a pretty good pick, but I just don't think he has the demeanor to get it done at Augusta. Oh, interesting. Well, interesting. Yeah, he, he gets he gets too angry at himself, and 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 you mm. get funny bounces at Augusta and stuff like that, and he just. You know what? In Australia, when you're playing down there and you're having a bad day, they call, you know, the head comes off and he's walking down, walking around with the head under his armpit there. That, that's going to be Terrell Atten. Okay. I, head, we'll head, watch head, for that. That'll come off. That's good. We'll I watch admit for that. that. I admit I'm taking a risk, but I really like how this guy plays on Saturdays and Sundays, especially to start this year. He's been very, very strong. He's under every single Saturday and Sunday that he's played this year. Clarky, you're my Last final two, two picks. picks. Okay, yes. I was worried here because um, when Doigie picked Cam Young, I thought, oh, my guy's gone. He's not gone. Cam Smith is my third pick. Yeah, yeah finally Smith. live one. We we finally had a live player taken. It, we knew we it go. was going to happen. It was yeah. just Chuggy was when, right? quick yeah. on that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. fourth, I got to go with the local hero. Corey Connors, number four. Yeah, I like it. I go. like it. Although he hasn't played very well lately. No, nope. uh, no, he's been it's struggling. Okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's yeah. His his, uh, his putting game hasn't been as strong as it should be, and and his irons this year haven't been as strong as they should be. So, but still, always a good pick there. So my team is done. Ryan, player. you wrap up your team here with another yes. H, right? Another H. No, not oh, another no. H. Oh. Again, another guy that is starting to really come alive and he was dancing pretty close with Mr. Scheffler at the last major. I really like how he plays. He fell apart a little bit on the Sunday, but I still think that this guy's iron play is going to really help him out at Augusta national. I love from South Africa, Louis Oosthuizen. You know what? Great pick. Great pick. Another live player. Right. Um, has always played well there. Made a two at the second hole a couple few years ago. I love Louie. I love his golf swing and everything. I love his demeanor. You know, you, you look at Louie when he's playing and you never know whether he's shooting 75 or 65. That's right. right? I like that. I like yeah. that. I like, there I like Louie. I, and I love his golf swing. Very, Doigie, very good. close us out. So Doigie and I, I just okay. want to mention, I just want to mention that Sandy Lyle is still available. <laughs> and and you know what? It's his last event that he's there ever going to play in. Yeah. And wouldn't that be quite a story? We'd be making a movie about that afterwards. Yeah. Right? You, you know, uh, and hit one of the greatest iron shots, seven iron out of the fairway bunker on 18 and all of golf to, and then to win the masters that year. And on top of all of that, he's a great guy, a really, mm. really good guy. It's a lot of fun, but I'm not going to go with him. Okay. Just so you know. Okay. All right, so I've got it down to uh, – I've got a couple here, and I, there's some really good players on the board, right? Like you've still got Xander Shoffley. Yeah. You've still got you've still got Dustin Johnson. You still have Tony Finau, Jason Day. Mm -hmm. You've got there's Jordan guys Spieth. There. Yeah. you got Jordan yeah. Spieth. Justin Thomas. They're all out Justin there still. Justin Thomas. Exactly. They're all still out there. Yep. And you know Victor what? Victor Hovland really is still out time there. time with this one. So Patrick Cantlay is out there. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Will I just Torres have a funny there. feeling. Whiskey I have a funny yeah. feeling about this. Okay, pick it. JT, Justin Thomas. Oh, you He's went to okay. get it done. Okay. He's going to get it done. Okay. Yeah. Now, you talk about a guy who can get pretty pouty. JT can get pretty <laughs> pouty out there. That now, he can. <laughs> Him and him and Victor Hoffman <coughs> might be having, a, or Tyrrell Hatton, pardon me, they might be having a frown off together on Saturday if things aren't going well. But yeah, when exactly. he's dialed in, if he's dialed in, there are few guys on earth better on, especially a back nine than JT. If he's dialed, he is as right. dangerous as anybody. That's a hell I think of a he'll be good. pick, Doigie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think yeah. he'll be good. And And you know what? If he gets his putter going hot, for the week yeah. early in the, in the week uh he could be unstoppable he just drives it so good and again his wedge game is extremely good and so i just you know what and i think he's due to win another major i think he's right there and he's been playing okay but he's ready to break out i mm -hmm. think this is the time okay yeah am I well, the only guy, and i'm the only guy am i the only guy without a live player on his team 
Uh, yeah. 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 I th- yeah. I think you might I think you might be yeah is yeah yeah you for are. such a supporter of live I'm surprised. <laughs> well, I, yeah. I I am. I, I know am. you I are. I just don't think I don't think they've been playing enough. So that's what yeah. concerns me. They're not they're not yeah. tournament ready. They're not ready to go play Augusta. Yeah. Right. Nobody it, wanted to take the ultimate risk and take our buddy Patrick Cheater Reed. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody yeah. you know wanted what? to take. Patrick Chili Dip Reed. Nobody wanted to take him. No. Nope. Right. And which is crazy because he might be the one guy from Live that has the biggest chip on his shoulder and wants to come in and just prove oh. to everybody that Live is the next greatest golf thing. And and he's gonna he may play well just because of that. Yeah. Right. Well, when so. he has a chip on his shoulders, typically when he's played really well over his career, and boy, yeah. he's been getting chirped pretty hard by some significant golfers and yeah. uh yeah i would be surprised if he showed up with you know a little little something in his back pocket who knows it it, it could be a, va- a violation it could be a good golf shot who knows you never know what you're gonna get with old chili dip you never know Dorgie, how do you think they'll exactly. be received how do you think they'll be received I, you know fans I, I mean. you know what I, I yeah no the 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 uh I think the whole, this whole animosity thing is media driven yeah. and it might mm-hmm. be media driven come and come from the hierarchy of the PGA tour. But as players look at, uh, I, I just was talking to somebody yesterday and a couple of the guys from live and a couple of the guys from PGA tour went up and played practice rounds together last week at Augusta. There, there's not going to be any animosity. First of all, they're professionals. Mm-hmm. Secondly, they understand that the, the hierarchy at Augusta national can do whatever they want. And if they start acting up and there's a little pouting going on or a little fracas in the, in the uh, locker room, the Fred Ridley and the guys at Augusta national are just going to ask them to leave and never come <laughs> back. And so mm-hmm. these players aren't dumb enough that they're going to let jeopardize that. Like the, yeah. the live yeah, yeah. players have to make sure that nothing happens this year so that they get invited back again next year. Right. Right. So nothing, there's going to be nothing. I mean, the dinner is going to be fine. It, it's going to be fine. Now with, will the, some of the spectators, I don't think they'll do anything either because I mean, you don't even run at Augusta, right? Like you, you, you walk at Augusta, you don't run from hole to hole. You walk. Uh, Is that so a rule? Polite. Like you can't, that's a rule. You can't run. Oh, really? if you start running. Somebody will come and get, tell you. And mm-hmm. and the, the spectators are so well informed and understanding and polite at Augusta. Mm. When you arrive in the morning, like say you want, you have a chair with you and you walk out to the 11th, green and put your chair down behind the 12th tee so that you can watch 11 green and 12 tee and 13 tee. yeah yeah the ki- your chair will sit there empty until you come back and decide to sit in it four hours later really so hmm. i don't see anybody booing or heckling the live players because yeah. uh yeah. you know augusta national's on top of everything and they're not going to let that happen and the spectators yeah. are they're traditionalists and they love the sport and they love Augusta national. So yeah, I, it, it, to me, it's a non-starter. It's a non-starter. I agree. So, yeah. Unless, everybody Pat, will be unless Patrick Reed wins. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> if, if chili dip wins, there'll be a couple chirps from the gallery. No yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Um, before we let you go, Doigie, uh, and get back on the road to your fun trip here. Yeah. You're you're upset again at your Maple Leafs. No, no, no. Why, we're not talking about the Leafs. Why are you so upset? No, no. We're why not are you so about upset? The no. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm upset because here, as a as a diehard Leaf fan, I want them to win the Stanley Cup. I believe that they have the players that can do that. I, I kind of laugh when I start to hear the experts talk and and maybe not experts in the newspapers and on social media talk about how bad our goaltending is. Our goaltending has been fine. You know, our, I, I have no problem with either one of our goaltenders and, and even our third line guy, Wall. I have no problem with him being in the net. We can win with any one of those goaltenders. What we can't win with is this lackadaisical type of play in in 20 losses oh, this year. Boy. 13 of them are to teams that are outside of the playoffs. That I mean, they won't on. be playing. They won't be playing. But them. I understand that. But don't, then you don't, don't worry. see Boston Bruins doing that. Oh no, they didn't they the didn't lose to Peters. Nash. They didn't lose to Nashville yesterday. No. Okay, once or once or twice a year I have no problem with, but ah. 13 out of 19 losses. Okay. Come on. Anyway. Okay. All I, I know, want, 
I want them to play better. I know one thing, Ryan. After spending the weekend with Ian and Chuggy, there's one uh-huh. true Leaf fan in that car right now. <laughs> and she knows who she is. <laughs> She's jumping up and down. Yeah. Well, that's... you know what? You're, you're right. I didn't watch much of the game the other night. It, yeah. it was a bit of Chuggy a... Chuggy and I uh, were watching it. it. My, you guys were watching and, and all that. But you know why I didn't watch it? Because I thought it was more important to spend time chatting <laughs> and talking with my childhood friend yeah. who I hadn't seen in 43 years. And we basically sat through the whole hockey game at the kitchen table chatting and, and that, and it was great to see her. So, and, and it, yeah. Ryan, it's wild. This childhood friend that Ian knows lives two houses away from Sue. There you isn't go. That, isn't that wild? Small world. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was yeah, a fun yeah. night. So it was good. So. Yeah, it was. It was a good time. So yeah, yeah very good. So there yeah. you go. Well, you know what? Yeah. It's going to be even yeah. more fun when I win the Masters draft. I, <laughs> I'm very confident that I'm I'm going to take this one from you guys. Good luck with Rory. I like that for you, Doigie. We'll see how it all shakes out, my friend. Enjoy your trip. Will do. And uh, keep in touch. And you're more than like more than welcome to call me and have me back on. You know, after the Masters or even next weekend, if you need to fill the fill the spot. So. Okay, just before you close, <laughs> I'll take Jordan Spieth, uh, well, Patrick Kempley, okay. oh, she's Xander all, all Shoffley, the garbage. and Dustin Johnson. <laughs> wow, okay. Say that again, say that again. Jordan Spieth. A late she's entry. Jordan. Jordan, Jordan, yeah, you know what, I'm just looking here and yeah. I'm going, why wouldn't I? Jordan yep. Spieth, uh, Patrick Kempley, Xander Shoffley, and Dustin Johnson. Okay. Spieth, Cantley, is that it? Did we only do four? and DJ? Yep, that's it. Yeah. That's okay. that's a pretty strong team. She's in. She's in. <laughs> Shoffley and crumbs. DJ for the crumbs. I, I like it. No, that's not crumbs because like there's so many good players left still. I like it. A late entry. I think yeah, it's late great. entry just swoops in at the last <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chuggy, Chuggy's gonna win entry. now. Yeah, Chuggy will yeah, win. Guaranteed. Right? He's gonna win. Guaranteed. Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll talk to you in All Florida right, then the week after the Masters, and we'll re- re- recap, okay? Okay. Sounds great. Sounds uh, good. Have a good weekend and all that, guys, yep. and we'll uh, talk to you soon. Drive Cheers. safe. Will do, Doigie. All, All right. right, we'll take a All quick right. break. When Cheers. we come back, Jason Brooks, longtime junior coach in the OHL, GOJHL, he's going to join us to chat about those Maple Leafs next here on Instigating. <laughs> Welcome back to Instigating with Clark and Jury. Thanks to our buddy Ian Doig of the Ian Doig Golf Academy for joining us to preview next week's Masters tournament. Make some Masters picks. We're he's off the bandwagon too. He's, he's off. off the, like, no, he's, he's not, not invited the to the parade. Wagon. He's no, not invited do, to the parade. Don't we, do we that. Told well, listen. That. No, no. Listen. If you listen. get off, if you get off, you're not coming back. Well, on. well. Listen. We're excited because there's one guy who's definitely not off the bandwagon of the Maple Leafs, and he joins us exactly. now. Our buddy. Jason Brooks, longtime junior hockey coach and Leafs aficionado. This guy knows what's going on. Brooksy, how you doing, brother? I'm good. I'm not sure I was on the bandwagon to begin with. So let's back this up. Come on now. True, You're... true fans don't go on and off a bandwagon. They're just true fans. That's right? that's fair. Fair. Exactly. exactly. You're in there. You're in there. You're not driving the bus, but you're in about the middle seat. You're okay. you're involved. Yeah. Like you yeah. don't say. Okay, I'm done cheering for this team. I'm going to cheer for another team. You've never said that, so we're good. No, no, no exactly. Fair ball. So, is this team ready? Are they? Are they? Are they playing well? Are they ready to go in the battles in the playoffs? Well, I like what they've done personally. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, I think Mr. Dubas did a great job of getting pieces in to make them better. Um, mm-hmm. You know. Are are they ready to take a run? I guess if there ever was a year, this is the year. I mean. Obviously, an O'Reilly, Ryan O'Reilly getting healthy will make you that much stronger, um, give you that much more depth. Uh, I'm still not sold on the defense, though, Clarky, um, mm-hmm. and I'm and I'm not sure in that. Like I, I mean, Samsonov has played very well for them. Matt Murray still is an enigma, if you ask mm-hmm. me. Um, maybe we get lucky and Joseph Wall becomes the next Ken Dryden. Um, Patrick Wall type figure that comes in and plays amazing and they go with him. But um, I, like, like I said, to begin Kyle Dubas, you know, I've had my comments about him on your show in the past. Yeah. And I, I think he did a heck, heck of a job. Like, I mean, whether he's in his last year or not, he mm-hmm. he's given them every opportunity to be successful. So good on him. 
it's strictly you know on what? the player's shoulders now, right? Yeah, you know, you know what, be. Brooksy? We, we've asked people. I, I'm interested in your thoughts on this. I, I agree with you. Do you think that barring whatever happens in the playoffs, that this should not be his last year because of what he's done? Should they extend him? I, uh, you know what? I don't know. It's it's so hard to say that because I mean, as I said to you last year, I thought they should have changed the staff. I mean, it was kind of like Groundhog Day. You just kind of keep going over and saying you're going to win with this core. You're going to win with this core. Mm-hmm. They they keep giving them opportunities. Um, but at the end of the day, his back's against the wall with no contract, um, mm-hmm. and he didn't leave really any stone unturned. Um, they've still got the wild card and that Matthew Nye is playing in Minnesota that. You know, mm-hmm. who knows what he's like if he comes in and provides them a top six winger that they slot in there again, gives them more depth up front, which you know, mm-hmm. is what they want, what they need. Yeah. And we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. We don't know how much influence um, ownership has had. We don't know how much influence Brennan Shanahan has had. Uh, you know, as well as I do, there's there's obviously influences from above where we don't know what Dubas has had to put up with all these years. Maybe they've said, no, you can't change, trade any of those four guys who sell the most jerseys. We don't know, right? Yeah, no, and that's fair. That's absolutely fair. I, I have to believe, though, that they they be in the Leaf organization, especially the owners and, and Shanahan, mm-hmm. they've given a pretty long rope to Kyle like they don't have many first round picks left in the tank Mm -hmm. he was able to make these transactions without moving a whole lot of prospects which was positive I think if he had come to the owners and said look I can trade Matthew Nyes for Patrick Mm -hmm. Kane I'm sure they probably would have said go for it I mean at the end of the day they want to Mm -hmm. win a Stanley Cup um, right now as much as anybody but um Again, to your point, Clarky. Though you're right, who knows? Maybe, maybe Shanty's saying, you know, you're 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 safe, you're fine. Make all the moves. We don't need draft picks for the next 25 years because we got to win. Is now, yeah, we got to yeah. win right now. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to say, and and you're right, Clarky. Like that's true of any team, really, in any sport. We don't know. Mm-hmm. We're not in the boardrooms. We don't know what mm-hmm. ownership might be saying, or the VP of hockey ops, or. Brendan Shanahan, any of those guys. I mean, there's a lot of people involved with running a hockey team. Mm-hmm. It, it It is unfair in many circumstances that a lot of it ends up falling on the general manager. There's a scouting staff. There's a pro scouting staff. There's a lot that goes into it. I want to dig into some of the guys on the team, though, and just your opinion of them, because we talked a lot about these guys last year, Brooksy. Let's start with Mitch Marner, who Clarky likes to affectionately or somewhat not affectionately refer to as Mr. Fancy Pants. Um, Fancy Pants has been your best player this year. I mean, he has legitimately been. Yep. I, I no, don't even no know question. who else is cl- I don't even know who else is close. Like Matthews is having a quote unquote down year. He's gonna score 40 goals, but he has been unbelievable. <clears throat> What's your opinion of Mitch? And have you seen his game evolve at all to another level? I'm not going to say it's evolved. I, I think Mitch Marner has always been that quote unquote fancy pants that Clarkie calls him. He he's uber talented. Mm-hmm. He makes unbelievable plays. I think, you know, defensively, especially on the penalty kill, I would say, you know, we saw snippets of that when he was in his earlier years, you know, and it's evolved to where he might be their best penalty killer. The, the part with Mitch Marner that I want to see evolve if this Leaf team is going to have success is every play doesn't have to be a home run. Sometimes you have to make a play, especially in the playoffs, to live to see another day. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to force a pass or force a, a, a great play um, all the time. And even in last night's game, and I didn't watch the whole game, but – the part I did watch, you know, against Florida, he had a play on the wall and he kind of throws his backhand no looker that goes the other way for an almost breakaway. And you're like, that you don't need that. Mm-hmm. That's still my concern with a guy like Marner. It's it's not that he's not unbelievable. It's just can he clean up those high risk, high turnovers, you know, mm-hmm. at the right time. Do you think 
or would you, if you were coaching this, this guy, tell him to stop calling penalties as well? Like that drives me not like he, I'm, I'm being a little facetious, but if he sees something on the ice, he's like putting his hand up, like ref, that's a penalty. That's a penalty. Like, would that bug you as a coach? Yeah, well, it, it definitely did. Um, especially yeah. when I was coaching junior, like you just want yeah. them to focus on playing the game. And exactly. I mean, I, I get that he's in the game. I get that he's very involved and he understands the game extremely well. I mean, again, mm-hmm. he is a super elite player, super elite yeah. talent. But yeah, I think sometimes referees look at that and say, hey, just focus Screw on you. your job, buddy. Yeah, like, yeah, I'll, I'll do mine. So, yeah, exactly. Matthews what has caught about, fire, though, right? Like, he's uh, like well, all of a recently, sudden, like, finally. yeah, in the last. Yeah, but I, I always wonder if he's been hurt a lot this year. Uh, well, he has. He has. He talked recently about the hand. The hand yeah, is bugging and, him again. And it must be better, though. Well, yeah. I mean, he's clearly feeling a lot better lately. I mean, he's got a lot of goals recently. What's he up to? Mm-hmm. 37 now. He's still behind Ovechkin, but he's got 37 shots the other now. Day. Yeah, 50. Yeah, he, one, I mean, one clearly game. he's st- the, the, the good thing for you guys, I think maybe is that he is starting to feel healthier and get mm-hmm. hotter at mm-hmm. a good time of year. But that being said, Brooksy, yeah, he's not going to score 60 again, but that really ultimately doesn't matter if they at least went around and have some success and you can't fault the way that he's played a- around the rest of the ice service. He has been really, yeah. I think he has gone to another level. He was already good defensively, <laughs> Brooksy, but I think he's gone to another level defensively where like he could win a Selkie someday. I really do think that. I, I don't disagree. I think, you know, defensively down low, he's become one of the game's best two-way centermen um, that just possesses <laughs> an Ovechkin-esque shot, right? Like, I mean, he's he's just that dangerous offensively. But defensively, like, you could match him up against teams' top-line centers and not be worried about him defending, um, not being worried about that matchup anymore where you used to be like, oh, geez, I don't know if I want him out against, mm-hmm. you know, those, those top end guys. Like, I don't know if I want him going head to head with Braden Point in Tampa. Well, now I'm kind of like, yeah, go ahead. Like, I think he's going to do a good job on him, especially now knowing we've got Ryan O'Reilly sitting there. You know, you've still got, you know, Tavares, who's had a pretty strong year offensively. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you come back with O'Reilly at center. Like, that's depth down the middle again that you had kind of going back to when Kadri was here, right? Only you've got a really ultimate 200 foot player in Ryan O'Reilly that can score and can defend. And then you got Tavares who I think has done a pretty good job again this year of scoring Mm -hmm. again, but also defending. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. What about the other guy that gets talked about an awful lot? And there were plenty of people complaining about him last year, old wild bill, bill Nylander. He, uh, (laughs) he's, he has, I I think probably of the three of those guys, because Tavares, you you just know what you're getting with that guy. Like, I can't ever complain about the effort level that Tavares puts out there, and he's the captain for a reason. But of the young guys, you know, Nylander's the guy that gets bagged on more than anybody, particularly after last year and maybe even the year before. Um, he, I think, has had the most marked noticeable improvement in terms of effort level. There's still some times out there where you can see that there's – You'd, you'd want a little more out of him, but I think overall his effort level consistency has really, really improved for the most part, in my opinion. What's your opinion there, Brooksy? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you 100%. I, I think his compete level has gone way up, mm-hmm. which is what I think the concern has been with William Nylander for a number of years, right? Like, I don't think anybody questioned the skill. I don't think anybody's ever questioned the offensive uh ability that he possesses but it was the the give a crap meter that was always in question and um literally the same as his dad brooksy like think back to when michael was playing like literally the exact same story uber talented you know get you 45 50 assists a year like good penalty killer but man he left you wanting more but but william seems to really be and 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 i think he's put his head down and driven to the net more this year than he he's done in his whole career combined. He's dropping his shoulder, man. He used to I, stop I've, on I've the boards, curl that. around and look for a pass. Now he's going yeah. to the net. Yeah. I, I agree guys. But uh, again, we talked about Marner at the beginning. What things do you want to see improve into the playoffs? I would say the same for Nylander is, you know, 
bring that into the playoffs. Like right now, I think he's going through the lull where it's kind of going the other way. And again, he's the target of, you know, is he working? Is he whatever? Like, I mean, mm-hmm. the overtime goal last night tries to make that extra move in the slot on the D turns it over <clears throat> two on one the other way. And again, I know it's overtime. I know it's, you know, 50, 50 time kind of thing, right? Yeah. Like the Leafs don't need to win it necessarily. They got their point. It'd be nice to win, but yeah it's still those little detail moments, right? Like he has success against Minnesota where he picked that guy's pocket scores, the beauty OT winner last night. He doesn't. And it's, mm-hmm. I don't know, just one of those 50 fifties. And what are you going to get in the playoffs from him? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, yeah. Brooksy, you know, when, when you won two cherry cups and a Sutherland cup with the list of cyclones, I, I would say that while well, the numbers would bear it out, your special teams, <clears throat> both those years, particularly the Sutherland year were head and shoulders above literally every other team in the entirety of that league. Like your power play was absolutely sickening and your penalty kill was as suffocating as I've ever seen at that junior B level. You've coached some really great players at all the levels that you've been involved with. What is your impression right now of where the Leafs special teams sit? Because as we know, it's an old cliche. Your special teams can really do an awful lot for you really in any game, but the playoffs in particular, what's your opinion? And are there any things that you see on either of those units that you would like to see them tweak a little bit? I'm always going to be interested on the power play. One, their breakout. I mean, I think for the last how many years, I think we've done this show after the playoffs. They don't make adjustments on their breakout. They don't make adjustments on their breakout. Um, And we know teams make adjustments, right? Like during the regular season, you know, nobody really makes those adjustments or subtle adjustments. But in the playoffs, especially when Montreal played, if you remember them standing them up at the blue line, they wouldn't let them carry any in under pressure or under under control sorry um and they were not willing to dump a puck in so are they going to be willing to dump it in if they need to and go after it um is one thing i would say on special teams but the other one the wild cards morgan riley on the top unit i mean he does not possess that scary shot to keep the other guys options you know more open because he's not as dangerous up top as, you know, some of the other elite defensemen, Mm -hmm. you know, quarterback, a power play. I mean, they've got enough pieces around. You could go five forwards even, but I, I know that's still kind (laughs) of nerve wracking for them as well. But um, I would, Mm -hmm. I would say that that's an interesting one still for me is Morgan Riley. Mm -hmm. And then the second unit, I think, again, it's just a matter of getting healthy. Right. And where, where do you put like Ryan O'Reilly on that unit? Or do you slide him into the top unit because he's a guy that could go in there? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you use the, what's the guy's name they got from Washington? Gustafson. Gustafson. Like, do you throw him on and, and run the top and, and let him be, you know, more of the guy? Like, I mean, if they choose to go 11 and seven and let him be the extra D, use him on the power play and let them run him up top. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, you would think with Marner and Matthews, Tavares around the net, Nylander. I mean, that, those are pretty dangerous names that should be able to create something. But mm-hmm. there's still that wild card, I think, with, with Riley up top. Yeah, when I'm yeah. watching, and I, I mean, I know the Leafs have a pretty good power play. But when I'm watching and knowing how, how, um, how much depth they have on their offensive side of things, I'm, I'm saying, like, why, why don't they use their regular lines on a power play? Uh, and and then you would have two really good units because to me that second unit now is is not very strong. When Ryan O'Reilly gets back, it will be stronger for sure. But what's the philosophy of a coach for going and and piling up one line instead of having that nice balance? I, I think I think when you're looking from Sheldon Keith's perspective and he's trying to find minutes for his big guys, mm-hmm. right? And, and and it's easy when he's looking at the weapon of Matthews and get that mm-hmm. shot off from anywhere. They're going to try to find him with whoever. Um, mm-hmm. Same with Marner. Marner, you know, he's going to find somebody open. He's going to, you know, make a good play, I guess, right? Like, quote, unquote, a good play, but he's going to find somebody. Um, I, I think that's why he does it is he's trying to get ice and give them that minute and a half, if he can say that, right, to to create. And um, mm-hmm. In saying that, though, Clarky, I don't disagree with you. They would definitely have balance with two units if mm-hmm. they if they chose to use two units. 
But again, the biggest weakness of their two units falls back on the back end. Yep. Yep. And, and it doesn't really matter who, who that, like who would have who, you know what I mean? Like you could say mm-hmm. Riley mm-hmm. goes to one, Gustafson goes to the other, but then how do you piece around the other the, guys, right? The, like, the fifth guy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for so sure. I think that's yeah. where part of that dilemma comes for sure. And lately Sheldon's been, well, he's been going uh, 11 and seven instead of 12 and six. What do you think about that? Um, again, I, I'm torn. Like I, there was a time when Leaf fans were clamoring for the top guys to play more. Mm-hmm. And I think that was when Babcock coached. <laughs> um, but, but right. They were saying, well, we got to find more minutes. We got to find more minutes. But when you run 11 forwards, you have to get yep. those big guys on the ice. Yep. The, the downside is the one injury or one injury away from yep. three lines and one extra guy. Right. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Um, that's always the fear factor. I, I can see in the playoffs them running for like, sorry, uh, 12 and six, four yeah. lines, full lines. Yeah. But um, again, uh, as we were talking, what's, what's your concern about this team? Still the back end. Like what are the D pairs going to be? What, right. and if you're going to go with six, what's your best six, right? That, Tell me, that, who do you think's the best six? Any, any <laughs> like six that doesn't involve Justin Hall. Well, <laughs> have you been talking to my kids? <laughs> Cause they well, tell you that. <laughs> well, I, I agree with you. To. Like, I think Luke Shen has stepped in and I, I think Luke Shen's way better than I thought he was at this age when he's come over. Cause he's we talked about it, Ryan. Liable, I didn't man. think he was, he, but he's big and strong and he's got to be a force. And the other guys have their head up a little bit more when he's on the ice. And I think he's better than Justin Hall and Lilligren's no been a little bit, you know, wonky lately, but yeah, I would think that that Shen's overhaul. I, I I agree with you. I think Shen's overhaul too. Um, yeah. I I like McCabe. Like I. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't sold on him. That nasty side. Part. He does have a nasty side, and he yep. moves well. Mm-hmm. Um, very physical, and I liked him paired with Brody. I think that's a a really solid mobile. Yep. Could potentially be a good shutdown pair. Hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah, know what it is with Hall. I don't understand it. I don't understand. I'll, I'll tell it. you exactly what it is. It's what is it? it's that it, he he tries to make the right play, but it, it's like he's constantly overthinking what he should no, no, but, do next. But and what he I mean lets is, guys get right through him into the danger I know. zone. But what Every I mean, though, Ryan he's is, on, Ryan, what I mean is, I don't get it. From from why is he still playing? Why is he playing ahead of these well, guys? That's what I don't I, get. I think that because they brought so many, what they bring in three new defensemen. Yeah. I think that because they did that, Sheldon is trying to run the 70 to see, okay, mm-hmm. who's really the odd man or two out here. Mm-hmm. Who's the one. And I think based on the way that they've been playing lately, it it's Hall and Gustafson. Cause Gustafson is a guy that he is a, <laughs> blue line in specialist he's not a good defender I, i'd actually i'd actually venture to say and trust me saying this as a caps fan i'd actually venture to say he's a worse defender than justin hall is if you can imagine that but what he's better at that justin hall is passing the puck and setting guys up right in their wheelhouse the caps yep. had him up there for a while when john carlson was hurt playing with ovi and he got plenty of assists on that power play that's mm-hmm. what he's useful for but over 60 minutes, I don't know that him being able to make a pretty pass is Mm -hmm. necessarily worth risking having him on the ice very often in your own end. So Mm -hmm. I think Mm -hmm. that that's the philosophy right now between the 11 and 7 thing is who's really my core guys that I want to run game one and hopefully not have to change too much barring an injury. I guess that's my that would be my take on it. I don't know what you think of that, Brooksy, but well, I was going to uh, deflect to Clarky and kind of get his opinion because I mean I'm still I'm not a Hall fan, um, no. a, a, as a Leaf fan either. So he mm-hmm. makes it hard mm-hmm. to be a fan of him, Brooksy. Mm-hmm. Like no, I, I, you I just see guys float through him like he's a ghostly apparition every time yeah. he's on for a goal against. It's like how come he didn't tie that guy up? I know I like don't get it. That's what I don't get. I just don't get he, it. He, he's I, but wand- I but he's here's Potter. what I'm worried about. I just he's I'm wand waving. I'm sort of convincing myself that opening game one in the playoffs against Tampa, Justin Hall will be back there, and okay, I will but, just shake my head. But then yeah. I then that's where I come to you and say, which you're probably right. But what are your pairs like? If you're not dressing yeah. seven, 
what are your pairs? Like if you're going to go McCabe and Brody, as mm-hmm. we talked about, and yeah. you've got yeah. Giordano with Lilligren, if Lilligren's in. Yeah. Right? And then Riley Shen, and Shen. Shen. Shen plays with Riley. But then, you know, mm-hmm. Hall, like Hall's in over Lilligren then playing with Giordano. Maybe. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. That's where he would fit, right? They got lots I of mean, depth. That... They just don't have that real good solid six that we can count upon every game, right? Yeah. N- not but right now. I think those guys will come in and out. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I the Lilligren, the Gustafson, Hall, yeah. and Shen. I think those guys yep. will come in and out. But... Yeah, depending on health, right? Will be part yep. of it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it could even it, it honestly could even come down to something as simple as home ice and controlling the matchups. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. being yep. able to say, okay, we've got an offensive zone draw coming out in that at home, and that's a night where Gustafson's in because you can throw him out there constantly all in the offensive zone. And mm-hmm. same same philosophy with Hall, right? It, it could be something literally as simple as that. Who knows? But mm-hmm. it, it'll be interesting. I think part of it though, too, fellows, and, and this goes back to our forward discussion is who's healthy up front. Like if yeah. you've got a healthy yeah. forward crew, you might go 11 and seven just because yeah. of what you're saying on the back end, the uncertainty yeah. you, you bring in, you know, O'Reilly back to your lineup, a cherry or however you say his name in, into that yeah. lineup. Yeah. And, and, and you run your 11 and say, you know what, boys skate, go right. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. we, we can tinker back here all we want on the back end just to survive. But you guys up front, like let the ponies yeah. out and let them go. Yeah, and as you mentioned, I, like Matthew Nyes, he's such a wild card. We have no idea yeah, how good this guy know. is going to be. We don't know. He could come out and be, holy crap, this guy's way better than we thought. Um, he's got a couple of games left at the Frozen Four, and we'll see what happens. And then I'm sure they'll try to sign him. Hopefully they can, and he'll be here. So, right, yeah, exciting times. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I got one more I want to ask you before we let you go, Brooksy. We always appreciate your insight from a coach's perspective. I think we're getting near a point now where I power play wise, I'd like to see them. We talked about this last year, too. I'd like to see him develop more of a one timer and and the team uh, and the team adjust to him being able to one time the puck. Matthews, it's hard to compare because Matthews is the center and he's got more defensive responsibility and by by that virtue plays more, gets more ice time. But Ovi's out there generally for two minutes. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. when it's I, I think he's such a lethal shooter. Pasternak, McDavid, Ovi. I think Matthews is in that rare category where he just needs to be out there for a minute 45, if not the full two. I just think that and 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 maybe. On where he is on the top unit, they've got him on his strong side, not taking one timers. Maybe when the first unit's out there, he's there. And when the second unit comes out, he shifts over and is ready for a one timer. You literally have two different units and your best score out there getting two different looks. I just think I, I would try doing that. I think he's that lethal of a player that I would want him with a man advantage, if not a two man advantage. I would want him out there as much as humanly possible. I don't know what your thoughts are. No, I, I think that's I think that's brilliant. I, you should be coaching. I, 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 <laughs> well, Lord help us. I, no, but, but I, I, I honestly, Ryan, I, I really truly agree with you. Like, um, and whether I, whether I would do exactly what you're saying and put him in the OV spot, I mean, we've seen at times he gets into that spot, he lets it go, and yeah, he he can rip her home. But the beauty about Matthews in that power play, whether it's being out with the top unit, starting on his, you know, forehand side, like that flank side, or even sliding up into the the middle, like him and O'Reilly switching mm-hmm. off and O'Reilly moving around. Like last night, I don't know if you guys noticed on the power play, O'Reilly, or not O'Reilly, sorry, Riley ends up below the goal line. And he's below the goal line playing catch with, it might have been Nylander below, and they tried to hit Tavares in the slot, like off of a box and one below the line. And I think any movement like that creates so so much indecision to the penalty kill, right? Mm-hmm. You do all your pre-scouting on these teams and you think you got them figured out and they throw wrinkles at you and you're like, well, I wasn't anticipating that, right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, y- you talk, I know, Ryan, you talk so much about Ovechkin and a lot of teams will cheat to him. They'll cheat to him and, and he still gets it off because he's got such an unbelievable shot and it's worked for him for so long, but what makes them so dis- like which made him so dangerous was the fact that you had Backstrom on the other flank who could score and mm-hmm. you had John Carlson sitting up top. And we talked about Riley's lack of that shot. 
Well, Carlson has that shot. And you, 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 you I'm going to defend Ovechkin. I'm going to defend Ovechkin, even though we know he's standing over there. And then Carlson comes down the pipe and rips one. Well, then somebody cheats to him. Well, then he hits Backstrom. Well, Backstrom, everybody thinks, is going to pass it, and he can finish it. Well, or he throws it into the bumper to Oshie, right? Like, you forget about all those other guys, and then somebody cheats to him or to one of the other guys. Now we get it back to Ovi, and he don't miss. Mm-hmm. Well, in Toronto, moving Matthews around into that, I think, is the only way around getting away from that pre-scout idea that says he's stuck in that one spot we got to right now he comes off that flank and you can see teams over committing to him right he doesn't get to walk into that snapper toe drag release and mm. and unload it right like he's usually kicking it back or mm. hitting hitting morgan riley up top and then they're trying to find neeland or mitchy on the other side right so yeah yeah, it's I don't know. I just think it's something that they could try. And uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll take your coaching endorsement, though. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll start sending resumes around. I got to say, though, I, I kind of prefer doing the play by play. I don't know if I could be behind a bench, my friend. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I think you do an unreal job of the play by play. But I, I, it's those little decisions that you're talking about that I think all coaches, you know, it go, runs through their mind. How can mm-hmm. we? How can we maximize, like I said, even their top talent? Why do we have all these guys on the one unit? Well, how am I going to get them out there to maximize the best players that I got mm-hmm. um, to give us the best chance to win? And you know, mm-hmm. your idea does make a lot of sense. No, it's, some, it's something to think about. Maybe I'll consider a, a third career. You never know. <laughs> Brooksy, we always appreciate your thoughts, my friend. Uh, enjoy the end of the hockey season here. Playoffs right around the corner. We always appreciate your time, my friend. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thank you very much. All right. We'll take another quick break, and Clark and I will come back and wrap up what's been a fun show this week here on Instigating. Back to wrap things up here on Instigating with Clarky and Dre. Ryan Dre back here with Chris Clark. Thanks back for Back is guests, right. Doig. Yes, back. Back, back from back the Dominican. Right. Yeah. You're... And Jason Brooks, of course, for joining back. us in the last segment. Yes, I was in the Dominican. My little brother got married. Very excited. Nice. Uh, lots of photos. Lots of photos. Producer Adams got one to throw up. Obviously, I'm very excited. My new sister-in-law, Amanda. There they are, the Drury's. My my brother Austin, I call him Roy. That's his nickname. Uh, what? So Roy, why? Uh, it's too long to explain. Okay. Ama- uh, okay. Kate posted my speech on Facebook. You can okay. go there for the info. Okay. I'll give you the full breakdown. Okay. But there's Roy and Amanda. Okay. Very exciting down in the Dominican. Nice. It was beautiful. It was a lot of fun. Uh, obviously, now quickly, this is my first show back. Obviously, um, our, our friends at Cool Bet, they believed in this show. They sponsored the show right out of the get go. Unfortunately, they're pulling out of the Ontario market. Many users will know that already. I just want to th- say thanks to everybody over there, starting with Chris Abbott, who started our relationship with them. Pat Gregoire, of course, our buddy Jake Bull and Moss. They're still going to be active in Canada and other provinces. Uh, sad to see them go but i just want to say thanks to them for believing in this show it's incredible you know who else still believes in this show though not that they don't it's it's not in their control our friends at larry hudson chevrolet buick gmc and of course al at the listful squash courts clarky lots going on still you the, there I, is I see lots a lot of going trucks on. over there there are lots lot, of trucks but you know what else a lot we have? of trucks we have you something got? that you would be thrilled with we oh, have a, yeah. we have a great corvette over there Oh, so if you're is looking it a little for a used, red Corvette, used, no, it's a little, it's a little uh, bright yellow Corvette, but it's oh, it's okay. cool. So, it's really so I cool. I can't play the Prince song. It's really when I cool. drive away with it. No, no, you couldn't do that. But <laughs> it, it is really cool. Uh, if someone's looking for a Corvette with like twelve thousand kilometers on it, like Whoa. it is mint condition. Um, okay, so it's available. Um, lots of trucks, as you mentioned, lots of trucks for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, that Corvette, I, I actually drove it around the lot the other day and it's, uh, it's a nice little car. <laughs> I mean, it's a unit. I mean, brother. obviously I can't afford the Corvette, but, uh-huh. um, there's people out there who probably are looking for a Corvette and, uh, this is a 2021 well, Stingray and it is unbelievable. Um, 12, I'll tell you what, you know. If there's if there's someone out there watching who wants to be exactly. our new key sponsor, maybe you could afford that new Corvette. That's right. You could buy the <laughs> Corvette and sponsor the show, yeah. right? right? Absolutely. Yeah, but it Absolutely. is it is it is really nice. It's on the lot, so it's uh, the best deal 
in Canada on a used Corvette. So come on cool. down and take a look if you're if you're looking for a used one. Um, and rock and roll. Um, little squash courts. Uh, we're in the playoff. We're about to hit the playoffs. We got to get Al on yes. next week because playoffs have begun. Um, I've moved my way yeah. back up. He dropped me. Al dropped me. I had this big, we had a big thing. He dropped me down because I hadn't played because I've been nursing an injury. I sent him a okay. doctor's note. He didn't care about the doctor's note. He said, nope, you haven't played in three weeks. You're dropping. So he dropped me to 16. I made it <laughs> back up to six. So we're good to go. Um, playoffs start next week. And uh, last night on Wednesday night, as we record this Thursday, uh, myself and uh, Mike Benjamins, who was on the show when we did the uh, show at the court, uh, Bill yes. Watson, um, Rob Annis, and Jim Chapman uh, all went down to Toronto as there was an international women's um, Canadian Open of squash going on um, oh. right downtown at the Brookfield place. And the setup was unbelievable and there it is there's the ceiling of the brookfield place and there's the court so they they travel with this court it's glass it's completely glass now a couple players playing there um number one seed in the white and the, the purple is kind of hard to see but she was number three seed um but they're sisters which was wow, kind of cool okay and, but the number one seed won, and uh there's a there's just a, a static shot of the court so it's all glass they oh, take it beautiful. up, put it down. Um, they've had this court at the uh, pyramids in Egypt. They've played outside there. Um, so it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Hey. Uh, and it was really, it was fun to watch. Like, what a competitive sport and competitive game. And uh, uh, the winner of that first match that we saw, the, the sisters, the older one won. And I'd never heard a more um, open and honest interview on the court afterwards and she says yeah i wanted to show her who is number one and who's the beast in this family and she might beat me one day i might be retired by the time she beats me but i keep beating her she comes close a couple of times but i beat her and it was like wow and like the poor sister was walked away like she didn't get in there like she was she was not happy a little upset sister but it was fun. It was fun to watch, and it was a good time. Right down Brookfield Place, just uh, yeah, right on Front Street there. So it was good. Incredible stuff. Well, hey, Great if time. you want to get involved in a rivalry mm-hmm. like that with a sibling or a coworker or a friend, yep. hit up our friend Al at the Listowel Squash Courts. They're on Facebook. They got a website. Easy to register. Easy to book times. Head over there, and if you want that little yellow Corvette. Go see my friend Clarky over at Larry Hudson's here in beautiful Listful, Ontario. That's a wrap on the show, brother. It was fun to be back. Remember, yep. you guys can watch this show Friday nights at 8, Sunday nights at 9 with our friends on Whiteman TV. That's Channel 6 for Whiteman subscribers. We debut on our YouTube channel Friday nights at 9 p.m. Follow us on social media at Instigating Pod. Thanks again to our great guests, Ian Doig and Jason Brooks. Clarky, it's good to be back. I'm going to nurse my tan. Yeah, for sure. It's good. We will be be back next week with more instigating go blue jays